Hey everybody, Ann here, sitting inside the tiny house today, having my coffee with all of you. I'm inside because, well, it's going to be cool for an extended period of time today, but I have been getting chewed up by bugs and I just can't stand it another second. So, I've already gone outside and done the chicken chores. Papa's gone for his romp over at Mr. Lucas' place, peed on all of his trees, and he's back now. Yeah, he's right. He's right over there. <laughs> Anyhow... Um, I'm going to look around at my garden today. It's not doing so hot. The wild things that grow are growing great, but there is a situation with the heat and the sun. I'm learning every year, um, every year I have to make adjustments. So this year is not going to be so great. I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to rescue some of these plants, but they look like they are suffering. Anyway, so how are all you doing? Is everybody doing all right? Are you, like, making it through the summer? How are your plants doing? I want to know how your plants are doing because misery loves company. <laughs> you know, of course, get down in the comment section and brag about how beautiful your garden is going. And tell me how you're doing it and where you live because clearly I don't know how to garden out here. Now, this is just kind of weird for me because back in Ohio, of course, I had abundant supply of water. But back in Ohio... I had lush gardens. They were container gardens for the most part. And I grew everything from potatoes to tomatoes, beans, uh, Brussels sprouts, just squash. Everything you can think of I could grow in a container out in Ohio. But here, not so much. And I think it's because of the heat and the extended raining period. That you know, We have a rainy period and then we go through a drought period. So anyhow, let me know how your garden's doing. So I'm gonna show you mine and it's kinda, of, mm. First, let's start with the banana pepper plants. They've been getting plenty of water and fertilizer, but this area, this little corner right here, gets a lot of sun. So um, a lot of the blooms have been falling off and it just hasn't been working out very good. So I'm gonna have to think about that next year or maybe somehow move the plants around to a shadier area when it gets too hot and too sunny outside. Now the jalapeno pepper plants, oh no, just positioned this way, they seem to be doing a little bit better. There's still some yellowing of the leaves, but I'm getting plenty, plenty of jalapeno peppers. I've been harvesting right and left, and so plenty, plenty of these. Now this plant here, has really been suffering. You can see it's been eaten by bugs. I really haven't done much pest control, but I've been pulling off the yellowing leaves. And I think the issue with this is also heat and too much sun. But I finally have one growing. So hopefully it'll rain today. If it's not gonna rain by 7 p.m., I'll go ahead and water them. Now these tomato plants, finally I have some tomatoes that are ripening but you'll see that there's a lot of that yellowing and I think a lot of that has to do with too much sun. Now you'll see these plants, these are older plants actually, they, they are suffering. They really are suffering, but these over here are doing much better. These are just maybe a couple of weeks younger, but they look healthier. The leaves are greener. I've been pulling off the yucky leaves here and there. Um, and I'm definitely going to get some tomatoes from here. See, that's growing pretty tall. But here's the thing. I have allowed some offshoots to grow. And that's not really a good idea. You should, from what I've read, you should really only have one stalk going up. All these are just taking too much energy. But I've got some tomatoes here. Um, I may go ahead and cut this one off today. This one's a little bit farther behind, but um, this one has one central stalk. I'll keep pulling off those little ones. And, and here too, once these tomatoes ripen, I may go ahead and pull those off and maybe just let them ripen the rest of the way inside. I'm going to try cutting these two limbs off here to see if I can get the rest of the plant to come in better. I don't know. Now, my green beans, if you remember the little side on the side of the tiny house, goodness, um, I had transplanted some beans and they were doing beautifully. This whole area here 
was covered in a vine but then we had a really hot sunny spell and a lot of the leaves came off they got burnt but over the last couple of days it's been really weird they've been coming back and we've had some new growth and it's starting to climb so hopefully this this plant will come back i'm really crossing my fingers i had transplanted two other bean plants here and there's a difference between that one and that one they were both transplanted at the same time this one here had beautiful lush leaves growing all the way up but the chickens came and pecked a lot of them off and i don't know why this one i mean i think they pecked off a few but this one is doing better and here's the thing about this plant too one of the chickens got stuck in between here back behind it so i pulled this out and these little vines it separated <laughs> the vines came out and the plant nearly died back to the ground but you can see it is doing okay now so i don't know see now this one it had lost almost all of its leaves and it looks like it's trying to come back i had almost decided yesterday to pull this plant because all the leaves are gone they just dropped off but i am going to go ahead and see if i can get it to keep going i'm really happy about the cayenne peppers in this corner they seem to get the right amount of sun and shade and they are really starting to bloom I'm absolutely going to have cayenne peppers. I have faith. I know it's going to happen. I need to get some of those leaves off at the bottom and over here too. But if you can see, I've even got, let's see if we can get this in focus. <laughs> I can't. I got one fruit coming in. This blackberry plant is doing amazing. Now, I had a few blackberries off of it, but since I had transplanted it this year, and you can tell the younger leaves, because they have actual five leaves per bunch, the older ones only have three. Some of you may say, oh, that looks like poison ivy. Well, you can tell the difference because there's little spiky things on it. Um, the poison ivy are viney, and their vines are smooth. So... Um, next year, now what will happen this year, this will die down to the ground. New shoots will come up and they'll look like this. But these shoots, they'll die back. But when they come back next year, they will develop the three leaf pattern and then I should get blackberries. But the leaves are medicinal. You can use them in tea and we'll talk about that in another video. This garden is going okay. But as you can see, the top part... Um, the lemon balm is getting kind of burnt on the top. Now, the, the nasturtium, I'm going to pull the nasturtium out of here completely uh, because it's just too big of a flowering plant to have in this garden. Um, I am going to grow it again next year, but it's going to be in its own pot, in its own position because they're beautiful plants. The leaves are delicious and the flowers are delicious, but the strawberries are still growing very well. Uh, transplanted some basil. This one got really burnt. In fact, this little stem down here, right there, got down to no leaves, but it's bouncing back, so that's good. Um, strawberries are a little bit burnt here. I'm still getting fruits, which is awesome. There's some time I've harvested this time so many times. And the lemon balm down here is doing much better because it's shaded better, and the basil is really growing very, very well. And the deal is okay. It's a little leggy. You can see it's already starting to get some seeds on there. Um, I wish I had planted more dill. And I got some more dill over here. And the lemon balm down here is doing better. Now, I think I kind of over-harvested this rosemary the other day because I just kind of killed it. So hopefully it'll come back. And I got more dill here. So that's awesome. These multicolored peppers are finally starting to thrive. I was really worried because a lot of the leaves had gotten very brown and they were dropping off. They're still dropping off a little bit, but the plants are really starting to bounce back. So I'm thinking that I may get some peppers. Almost every plant has blooms on it now. And yep, one even has a little fruit on it. So I think I'm gonna get some peppers. So that makes me extremely happy. Now these over here, these were kind of, you know, plants. I didn't think they would grow, 
but these are this is a cherry tomato plant and these are those walking onions I'm probably going to take those out of there um, I've just been harvesting the tops I want this plant to get plenty plenty of nutrition whoops it's starting to sprinkle hooray and then this is just some of those more tomatoes I don't know exactly what kind they are I probably should have only let one plant grow in this pot but I thought you know what what the heck we'll just see what happens look at this tragic cucumber plant and the beans behind it all of the cucumber plants now I've harvested numerous cucumbers off these already but the it gets really hot here the Sun gets really bright really hot and so these leaves kind of dried off uh, got yellow and fell off and whatnot but there is new growth it is trying to come back so I'm just gonna see what happens with this plant yeah I got another cucumber down there here's the beans I got a big bean right there you know what I'm gonna pull it off right now and just have a snack yep now this plant totally got burnt as well it got burnt big time a lot of the leaves fell off but look we're getting new growth we're getting new leaves so it's starting to come back I'm just gonna hope and pray that this plant survives and I can get some more green beans because I love me some green beans look at this look you guys that squash is out of control oh and look I got a little bit of borage going it's gonna be overwhelmed by these squash plants well, so far all I have is um, male flowers I don't have any female flowers and I've been checking the leaves almost daily to make sure there's no squash bugs I already had one squash bug situation where a squash bug was laying eggs all over the place I removed the leaf I uh, took it way far out of the garden and uh, I killed the squash bug and fed it to the chickens and we got more borage over here it's being kind of dwarfed by everything else so there's zucchini squash and then there's I don't know I think that's like butternut squash over there who knows because the chickens got in this and they lifted stuff up and put it elsewhere so who knows what's going to grow but that's looking pretty lovely so I'm really happy with that over here in this garden bed hmm not so much tomatoes are still trying to grow they're still getting yellowing leaves I think this is maybe due to a fungus who knows I've got some borage growing there and a little bit more over there thank goodness now these sweet green bell peppers are doing horrible um, I'm just gonna let them go you know the onions are doing pretty good I have been harvesting the tops of them right and left I should really just snip them and not pull them because look at it does that but um, the onions are doing great and I keep taking the tops off of them and using them in cooking now over here <laughs> I really shouldn't have planted those radishes and carrots when I did um, because really I should have planted them a little bit later but they're still kind of hanging on trying to come up these beans remember how bad they were looking well they are totally starting to grow now which kind of thrills me a little bit I need to get some better poles and stake them up a little bit better but I think I may have some pole beans back here and it's because in this area they get less Sun they are in more shade the passion fruit vine well this one's gonna make it this one I took some of the leaves off of it and it looks like it's trying to send out new shoots here but some of these leaves just need to come off yeah that just come came off on its own um, I might try and trim a little bit more of that back that one's really suffering this one's kind of sort of suffering but I think it's gonna make it time is doing great peppermint is doing great I keep harvesting off of both of these oregano is doing great I need to pinch some of that off and uh, all these other herbs are doing just fine I think I over harvested this one anyhow look at this this is where Daisy is I got something sprouting them I have no idea what it is could be the lavender could be the daisies the basil is doing really well in this little bicycle planter thing look at that isn't that adorable Peppermint is doing great. I've pinched off this so many times. This rosemary is doing great. Basil doing great. Nice little plant right here. That's doing fine. 
and yeah, some more lilies growing here. The calendula really isn't taking off, but oh well. But look at this, that sage, it's finally taking off. I can't wait. And yeah, the oregano is doing very, very well. This little herb garden, I've taken out most of the vegetation, fed it to the chickens. These are just chia seeds, <laughs> microgreens. One little dill. This basil plant is doing good, so is this one. And we got some more thyme growing. I took out all of the nasturtium in here and basically ate it for dinner. Um, this beauty berry plant, I really probably should have been cutting it back a little bit more so it branch out more. And I've been using quite a bit of it in my bug spray, um, but I'm out of bug spray and I need more, but I'm not gonna, I don't know, we'll just have to see what to do with this. But these sunflowers, look you guys, look at my sunflowers. Oh yeah, they're doing great. Yeah, that makes me very happy. Look at this plantain, it's all gonna make it. Yep, it's all gonna make it. So I'm gonna go and um, cut back some of these weeds I don't want in here and try and preserve any clover if it's down in there. But Yep, I got lovely, lovely plantain leaves. Hmm, look at this one. This one looks pretty big. I wonder, I wonder if I should make some cabbage wraps today. You know, cabbage rolls using plantain? I don't know, we'll have to see. Look at me, it's 10.30 and I'm still in my jammies. I might stay in my jammies all day long. But here's the chickens, yep. Um, you know, I have discovered that there's a learning curve to growing out here in really hot, humid weather. Um, you can plant later in the season and have a longer growing season, so I'm looking into some things that I can plant now that will do okay for the rest of the year. Um, I'm learning that my growing of herbs is pretty solid, so I'm doing that okay. My growing of wild things, duh, is going well. Um, there are certain things that are going okay. I'm really disappointed in the tomatoes and the peppers, but the pepper plants are starting to come in now. The cayenne is starting to come in. Everything is kind of starting to bounce back, so I'm hoping that will be a trend and that I'll have a better harvest later on. I mean, I shouldn't complain because I've been harvesting cucumbers. I've been harvesting jalapeno peppers. I've been, I've been harvesting a lot of herbs, so... I mean, I've been blessed. I really have been blessed, but I was hoping this year would be better. Who knows? Maybe maybe it'll take off. Maybe it won't. We'll just have to see. I went ahead and did it. I made cabbage rolls, but instead I used large plantain leaves for the wrap. The filling is packaged chicken, cooked rice, diced chanterelles, jalapeno pepper, one that's been diced, chopped green onion, chopped wild lettuce, Feta cheese and the feta cheese, oh, it made it delicious. Seasoned with salt, pepper, garlic. And then what I did is I just put tomato sauce down in my cast iron skillet. Um, I put the rolls on top of that. I spooned some sauce over the top of that. Sprinkled Colby cheese and it's the dehydrated Colby cheese that I got from Augustin Farms. I'm going to have to talk to you more about that. Um, I sprinkled some Parmesan cheese over the top of that, garnished it with chopped green onions, covered with more tomato sauce. I had more of the filling, so I just used it as a side dish, and I spooned some of the sauce over the top of it. And let me tell you, it was really, really delicious. But one thing I noticed is that the larger plantain leaves are tougher. They're not melt in your mouth like a cabbage wrap would be. So in the future, if I do this again, I will undercook the filling, in particularly the rice. And wrap it, put it in the pan, add plenty of sauce, and then I will just let it stew for longer. And if you have plenty of sauce, that rice will cook the rest of the way. So if you're going to do this, I would suggest you do it the same way and it will turn out perfect. Um, the filling was a little bit overcooked as far as the rice, but it was still delicious. And this is what it looks like right before I put it into my mouth. And I have to tell you, you guys, that cheese, it was dehydrated. I did not rehydrate it before I sprinkled it on top. 
and with it just simmering in the sauce, it rehydrated perfectly and it had all the properties that a shredded cheese would have. It was stringy, it was delicious, and it was absolutely perfect. And it really tied this dish together so very well. Yeah, I would suggest you try to do this too. But remember, you got to stew the plantain leaves longer because they are going to be tougher. That's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.